All right, first thing is go to insert movie and find the movie that you want to analyze and go ahead and open that up here. You're going to be able to make the movie bigger and, and move it around on screen if you want. And you can go ahead and hit play. And, um, and you can also actually scrub back and forth and look, and look frame by frame. Um, and the idea is you want to find where the first um, the, the first frame that the ball has left the catapult. So um, it might so go back and forth until you can find it, the exact moment that the ball has finished leaving the catapult and now it's on its on its own um, flying as a projectile. So right here uh, is, is that frame. If you're off by a couple, that's fine too. Remember, we're just looking at the first few hundredths of a second here. Uh, so you need to make sure you override the frame rate to 400 frames per second here, right? We filmed this in slow motion. Uh, that's under options, movie options. You can also just right, double click on the movie to bring that up. You open up the video tools by hitting that button in the lower bottom right. Um, the first thing we're going to do is set our coordinate system. So we're going to set our origin right at the first spot that our ball is. You have to make sure that the coordinate system is that, that it that the video is horizontal, right? So your x-axis you can check to make sure that it's parallel with the lines on the wall. Uh, you can also turn off and on the the origin after you've set it. Uh, the ne the next thing that's important is to set the scale, right? The the video needs to know, or Logger Pro needs to know how how big a meter is on your video. So that's why there's a meter stick in your video. You go ahead and drag and drop. Um, and drag across the meter stick and set that equal to one meter. Then you go ahead. Then you're ready to go ahead and start uh, recording your data points. Um, that second bot button from the top, add point. You just go ahead and click on that. Um, click right in the center of the ping pong ball. When you do that, it'll put a blue dot there and take you to the next frame. And then you just keep doing that. You want to do about 15 or 20 frames. Um, the first. That's the first first few hundredths of a second. That's, we're just looking for the initial speed here. We don't want to watch the whole trajectory. You can see that the, as, you, as you click on the points, the table is filled in with the X um, and the Y value, um, and the graph below is automatically plotted as well. Once you've done about 15 or 20 data points, then you're ready to fit a line to your data. You're going to go up to the to the button uh, that's marked R equals. There's a there's a it's up here. There's a curve um, and a line on it. You're going to select both uh, both sets of data, and that'll fit a line to the X and a and, and a line to the Y data. And remember, the slopes of the of the X versus time is going to be your X velocity. The slope of the Y versus time is going to be your Y velocity. Right, and that's all the, the information you need um, for right now from this data. So all that's left to do then is to print the graphs. Actually, that's wrong. There's one more thing that you have to do before you print the graph, um, and that's to give your graph a title, of course. Every graph needs a title. A good title would probably be just to use the the name of the group whose catapult you're looking at. When you print it out, then um, in the footer, you can put your name there. So your name goes there, but the group's name goes on the graph's title. And that's it.